Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this video, I want to talk a little about the Hearthstone meta game in early Rise of Shadows and what nerves might be coming, because we all know that inevitably nerves are coming. But what kind of nerves do we need this time? Overall, I'm happy to say that Hearthstone meta is one of the healthiest metas that Hearthstone has ever had. Now, lots of decks that you can play, so overall, lots of variety, lots of potential. It's been a really fun and interesting meta game. But as always, as deck lists are being refined, we start to see which decks are really the top of the line. And this time, the top of the line is Rogue. Temple Rogue, something like this, there are many, many variants of the archetype, but something along these lines. That's the best deck in the game. More than 25% of the meta on higher ranks consists only of various types of Temple Rogues. And that, that has got to be too much. Also, when you look at statistics, you can see that Warrior is the only counter to Temple Rogue. And people are already trying to build Temple Rogue lists that beat Warrior. They use stuff like Jeff Nomi, or they use stuff like Heisper and Tokwagal. They give up a tiny percentage against other builds, but they start beating Warriors too. So overall, the power level of Rogue is probably too high, and I think that has got to be touched. And the real power move of all these rogue decks right now is Raiding Party. Raiding Party, draw two pirates from your deck, combo and a weapon. And Raiding Party is used to tutor for Waggle Pick and for some Dread Corsairs. And also a couple of other pirates in the deck like Captain Greenskin, which can make Waggle Pick even bigger, scarily enough. But Waggle Pick, Dread Corsairs, especially if you use this together with preparation. Like even if you have it on turn 4, you prep your Raiding Party, you immediately equip a Waggle Pick, then you slam a Dread Corsair. Whoa, what a swing. Or if you have this on tree, you prep your raiding party and you play Evil Miscreant, you get the combo effect of that one too, or you play Edwin. So just, just an insanely powerful combination of things that you can do. And this is why I believe that raiding party is the card that has got to be nerfed in order to contain Rogue. You might argue that there are other candidates too. Blizzard loves to nerf classic set cards, we all know that. And that's why I'm a little bit afraid that there might be nerfs to Preparation and or to Edwin. Edwin is obviously strong, especially strong with Preparation and things, but then again, it has not seen play in all Rotex at all times. But neither has preparation. Even though preparation is something very typically rogue, it's a tempo card, it's a pure tempo card. And rogue is the only pure tempo class in Hearthstone, with cards such as Sap and cards such as preparation. So nerfing preparation would probably allow Blizzard to design spells for rogue a little bit more freely. But there are two reasons that I believe preparation should not be nerfed. One is that this tempo is really Rogue's class identity, and there are not many ways in Hearthstone to generate tempo. Hearthstone is much more like an on-curve play card game. And the second is that if you look at the win rates, then it is Raiding Party that is still above even preparation in all those Rogue lists. Sure, Preparation Raiding Party is the best two-card combo you can do in the deck, but even if you coin Raiding Party, that's still good that still allows you to do all those swings. Even if you do backstep raiding party, that still allows you to do those big swings on turn 4. So nerfing preparation, even though it would potentially solve the issue pretty much, is not really touching the core of the issue, which is the strength of raiding party together with the available pirate and weapon pool. Therefore, the nerf that I hope to see is that raiding party is going to be changed, possibly by removing the combo effect. Say it draws pirates from your deck, but it doesn't tutor for the weapon. Tutoring for the weapon is incredibly powerful. If you miss the tutor for weapon effect, then you can maybe see rogue decks going into various directions, because they could be tempo rogue decks still. But if those decks don't run raiding party, there's no reason for them to run preparation. And if they don't run preparation and raiding party, then they might not even want to run Edwin, because they don't have those cheap cards that activate the big Edwin. On the other hand, you could still play the classic Miracle Rogue style, which doesn't really require Raiding Party anyway, and there you will still use Preparation, you will still use Edwin, but the deck is weaker than the Tempo Rogues that we are seeing currently. 
And we might even see slower temporal decks with Togwaggle, and they might still run preparation, even without the raiding party component. Overall, a card game meta is a very delicate thing. Small changes can have big effects. And I would really like to see a moderate toning down of Rogue. Because if Rogue was toned down just a bit, then that would already open the way for lots of decks that are currently being pushed out by Rogue. And then again, those decks, for example, counter Warrior. Because after Rogue, Warrior is the second most popular class right now. And many of Warrior counters just can't succeed because Rogue is pushing so hard. So if we just tone down Rogue a little bit, that might be enough to bring balance to the meta. There's also one other card that I would love to see changed, even though it might not affect the highest levels of gameplay that much, because Hearthstone is often very tempo-oriented, fast decks have an inherent advantage, but Archivist Deliciana. Archivist Deliciana in its current form, it destroys control matchups. Control matchups are terribly boring, almost unplayable, much lower skill level matchups than they used to be, and it's all because Archivist Deliciana, which allows you to switch cards in your deck and go for 45 turns. We have already seen the first signs of people bringing Control Warriors to a tournament, where they unironically run the boom scheme, just so that they will have so much armor when the game ends on turn 45, that according to tournament rules they will win the otherwise drawn game. And in order to get rid of this, Elysiana must stop giving resources, period. If it gives resources, there will be bouncers, there will be various ways to make copies of it. It will be found out. On the other hand, we have also seen Gamers Assembly Tournament, where Elysiana was banned, and Bomb Warrior was all over the place. Bomb Warrior really, really ruled, because Elysiana did not allow control decks to counter Bomb Warrior anymore, so Bomb Warrior was just superior. But if Elysian was a battle cry, that for the rest of the game, no cards can be shuffled into your deck, then Elysian could not be used to avoid fatigue, but it could be used to counter Bomb Warrior. And that would bring balance to the battle between control and bombs. And that would also make control matchups skill matchups again. And really, that's it. Two cards. I believe that if we change two cards, we can go a long way to balance the meta. And that's partially because the meta is pretty good right now. I do hear occasional arguments about the hero cards, especially this couple here. Not so much with Hagata really. Shaman is viable, but it just isn't considered to be as good as Warrior. But a lot about Dr. Boom, Mad Genius. And it is true, when you look at win rate statistics, ability to find Dr. Boom has a huge effect on the game. The hero powers it gives you, those are just so powerful. The ability for the mechs to rush after you have played Boom, turning all your minions into instant removal. That is powerful. On the other hand, I believe that Warrior has some natural counter still, quite a lot more than Rogue, in fact. So Boom doesn't necessarily affect the balance that much. And Boom is even beatable in control versus control, even though it's difficult. But as an optional third card change, I would not mind some change to Dr. Boom. Whether it's something to do with the hero powers, or whether it would be a removal of the rush from the mechs, there could be some level of adjustment. But I don't think it's as important as toning down the rogue and changing the way Elysiana works. So, now that we have a somewhat stable metagame, those are my thoughts about how Hearthstone could be even better, but overall, this Hearthstone meta is one of the most enjoyable metas Hearthstone has ever had, so that's already an upside. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.